So every business has a unique approach and its own lingo. So it's important that if you have a business that you help people, you know, come in line with it, you know, so that then both of you, you know, can two agree, except they, uh, can two work together, except they agree. So you're, you're pretty much coming to a place of agreement so you can work together, right? So uh, teach in a constructive way, right? So that the training connects the person to the job and to your company, its culture and its communication style, right? So um, you're pretty much, you know, it's, uh, like I said, it's pretty much as a sales speech, right? Which the right person will easily buy, right? Because you've employed with that in mind. And then you've made an employment mistake. You need to let the person go, right? Great. So, uh, so train your people to be proactive rather than reactive, right? So well, part of a training of employees is for them to feel comfortable, feel feel a part of the company, you know, and and do run it as if it's their own personal one. So they're not just leaving all the decisions right to upper management. You know, in terms of our farm workers, we don't expect them to be leaving all the decisions to the farm manager. You know, they come with some level of experience, right, in, in a working farm. So we, we want them to come with that level of experience and, and, and help us, right? And if they see something in the future uh, are coming that will be harmful or, 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 or will not add value to us, we expect them to be able to tell us, right? So... Everyone in our company, you know, is a owner of the company, right? You know, they own their job, part of it. And for that, they are well remunerated for it, right? So, uh, yeah, and for our farm workers, they've, they've come with great ideas, right? I see new things being done, you know, that we either have not done before, you know, but then we we'll need to encourage that, right? So whether it's a business or real estate, you know, all right, you often end up throwing good money after bad if you don't make quality investments in systems, staff, operations, and material, right? So when you spend the money, spend the money it takes to get all of these working, right? So we, right? So we do, we do. My farm manager have never missed a payment, never missed a payment, even though we're not making money right now. Well, I can confidently say I've never missed a payment, even though we're in an investing phase. But it's goodwill. It's part of the goodwill to uh, make him feel at home, make him feel a part of what we're doing. Same thing for our farm workers. Never miss the payment, never, ho never owing anybody any money. Right, everyone is well paid, right? Because they need to be happy to do the work right, right? So invest in whatever it needs to be invested in. I would uh, help to, to move, move everyone forward towards the goal that the company has set, set for it, right? Yeah, you, need, you need to spend, you need to sow to be able to get. And getting, sowing really is a, it's a fate work, right? Because you're not getting immediately. Right, we put in so much money into our farm, right? And it's because we have faith that we'll make it back, right? So whether it's business or real estate or, or relationship, sometimes you have to stop and think about how much you're going to invest in something, right? You know, as I read that, I, I think about our poultry, right? I mean, we're putting so much money there so far and there's still yet so much to do right there. You know, and I look at how much more we need to put that to get it operational. I mean, I run through my mind all the time because I don't want to uh, run out of money and we're not able to finish it. So we cannot then start making money and we're stuck, you know. So I reevaluate that all the time, you know, to make sure that we're able to finish, get it to a place where it starts making money. Because when it starts making money, then he can stop paying for itself, you know. So I kind of think about that, but so far so good that there is resource available to, to close it, you know. But yeah, so 
So, and that could be, that's one of the links to me for the business is the source of funds, right? To have the people also, you know, we need to find workers and we got one, got better ones that we've got in prior years, you know, have my farm manager, you know, the link in our business. One of the things we missed in the prior years is getting marketers, getting people to receive our goods at the right price. You know, we missed that in our first year, 2021, 2022. And here in 2023, we're all set to do better. And we're already doing better. I mean, we're already bringing products here to Lagos and selling. And we have opportunities opening up to us, left, right, and center also to do better. You know, that in our personal lives, we could also take that away, you know, and, um, uh, you know, I I put a lot into uh, my emotional bank account of my friends. I'm there, I'm there as much as I can be. But also when they are in a position to do something that I need, I call on them, right? So there's a free flow for me in and out, right? I don't hold back in drawing on the emotional bank account with my friends because I also generously invest in it, right? So I'm not a parasite that uh, I know I can do everything I need to do myself. So I don't, I don't keep myself. I don't try to do things. I have, I know people that can do better. Just as much as I help people to do things, they can do better. I also pull on people that can do things better than I can, you know. And it's, it's got to be give and take. There's got to be reciprocity, you know, or, um, reciprocity about it. Otherwise, someone is going to feel used, you know. And that's part of strengthening the links in your life. Uh, I hope you get you got something from all of this, but that's chapter seven. Uh, there's a quote here that uh, you know, Bethany Pooh said, "Teach people to fish, and they will thrive." You know, if you, and that goes for your work is right. It's not about um, micromanaging and do it for them. Let them grow to learn how to do it. You know, like my farm manager. You know, his issue is knowing the commercial part, the business part of the of it all. But it's getting to learn from an open book, you know, and I show him and tell him things I'm doing. And that's helping helping him also. Helping him to help me and helping me helping him to help himself also. You know. But that's all. That's all I have. And I don't have any of my people here to bring up questions that might have stretched things out. So that's all I got. I'm going to stop here today. We'll be back next week with chapter eight. And chapter eight um, title is uh, Know Your Circle. Uh, keep your circle tight, right? Just like what we spoke about. I'll call it Keep Your Team side Tight. Keep Your Tribe Tight, right? You want to get rid of all the strangers. Hey, you know, you don't want to find another stranger when you are in dying need. But we'll go into that next week. All right, we're gonna stop here. Thanks, thanks for spending this time with me. Thanks for coming around. God bless you. Have a great week ahead, you know, put in your best, right? That's the only way you can get all that God has for you. Don't be slack. All right, God, life was not made for slack people. Life was made for intentional people. To get your worth out of life, you got to be intentional. So go after it. God bless you. See you here next week. Bye-bye.